Are y'all ready? Good, good, good. Well, the very first thing that I want to do is I want to look at a couple of scriptures here. And uh, let's turn to 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 8. 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 8. And uh, can you bring me a microphone as well? Uh, so 2 Corinthians 9, 8 says this. Thank you. It says, and God is able to make all grace abound to you. Now, are you happy about that? <laughs> Do you want all grace to abound to you? Not just come to you, but abound to you? Yeah. Wouldn't that be good? And it says God is able to do it, but here's the thing. As you keep on reading this verse, you see that he's not only able to do it, he wants to do it. He wants to get all grace in your life. He's able to make all grace abound to you so that always, like sometimes, no, always having all sufficiency. Have you ever had all sufficiency in your life? Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> but this is a promise of God. Do you know why some people don't have it? It's because they don't know that God promised it. They don't know that God made it available. So always, so never not having this, having all sufficiency in everything. In everything. There are so many absolutes in this verse. And usually I'm not a fan of men speaking absolutes. But when God speaks absolutes, I like them, right? <laughs> He wants, to, he wants to bring us all sufficiency, always, in everything. And then watch this. He says, so that you may have, that you may have, that you, say I, I. so that I might have, my that you might have an abundance. An abundance. Now you need to know, why does God want you to have that abundance? It's for every good deed. In the King James, this says, for every good work. Right? So he wants us to have an abundance for every good work. But here's the key point that we're looking at today is God wants you to have an abundance. Yeah. He wants you to have an abundance. And so before we even jump into the material today, we're going to go over all of these things. But you can write some of these scriptures down. And before we jump in there, I want to give you a couple of testimonies. So I'd like for Will and Natalie to come up. I did not prep them for this. And uh, then after them, I got somebody else I want to come up. And uh, Jade right now is wondering, is he going to have me come up there with, with my hat? <laughs> so... Uh, what I'd like for y'all to tell is, you know, last time we were going through this course and this class, your lives look different financially than it does now. And so in just about a minute, like one minute, y'all just share what happened by not only what happened in this class, but what did God do? What does God want to do for everybody else? You know, and tell them some of what y'all saw. <laughs> In my instance, I'd had 10 years of work, no raises whatsoever, and, you know, it, it looked pretty bad for us. We started coming to church, we started tithing, sowing, doing the right thing. Everything turned around, I got one raise, 50 cent, next year I got another raise, 50 cent, then they did a negotiation. Not only did I get another raise, but I've got guaranteed raises for the next five years. <laughs> and you had not seen them for years. Ten years. Glory to God. Glory to God. Tell, tell your, your version. Okay. We came to this class last year, and our budget was like going down negative of probably about $1,400 a month, and we didn't really realize. A month. A month. <laughs> And we just, you know, was, you know, we was having like, okay, how are we going to pay this and borrow in here, try to pay, you know, stuff. But with the pastor's help and Stephen's help, you know, we read the refinance and, and we got on the budget and seeing where we were spending our money and got everything fixed. And like Will said, we started tithing. Yeah. Tithing. Like it says, God will give you the seed if you plant. Yes, amen. I don't amen. know if I said amen. that right, yeah. but <laughs> anyway. And so now we're in the positive. 
Woohoo! We have a savings account that we <laughs> haven't had in probably 29 years. <laughs> I don't know. Glory but to God. We have a savings account, and we've been able to help. When the pastors asked about, yeah. okay, somebody needs help. Worth it, you know. We pray about it, and we're together, and it's so funny. <laughs> we'll say, we'll say, okay, they need help with this, you know, and I'll say, well, I'm thinking this now, and we'll say, well, that's what I was thinking about. That's so awesome. it's we, you know, God's put it on both of us that we're agreeing yeah. together on how to help and how much to help, and and if still, if you kind of look at stuff, it's like. How, how do we tie that much? Yeah. How, how are we able to help? Yeah. It's God. Amen. That's, that's the only way. God's it working is, supernaturally. So you were going in the negative over 1400 a month, and now you're in the positive. And that happened within just a few months. The yes. Lord, oh, yes. and it was supernatural. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just yeah. like moving, like God came in and helped you supernaturally. And a couple of times during the year, you had some bigger th uh, debts, or, or not debts, but... Uh, some challenges like needed to fix something or whatever and God came through in ways you didn't even see oh, yes. and uh, a year and a half ago you needed people to give to you and now you're able to give to others and right. amen good job yeah. <laughs> that's awesome God's so good amen yeah. and uh, all right so now I uh, want to want to have one more testimony Abigail come here please she didn't know I was going to call her so while she's walking up here, what I want to give to you is this, is that she, uh, you know, she's about to turn 17. And uh, so one of the things that we told her as, you know, we're teaching her how to believe on God. We're teaching her, hey, this stuff works. These things of the Lord, they work, right? And so we started teaching her. And, and at the beginning of this year, we said, all right, starting February 1st, you now have your own car. You've got to believe God yourself for this portion of your insurance. We'll pay some of it, but you've got to pay for it. Well, she doesn't have a job. She doesn't have like a go nine to five. She's still full time in school, got a, a full load going on there, you know, and uh, she's in her junior year, but she's already working on her college classes to get a degree and everything. I said, you got to trust God. And so what that means is you got to do what we're talking about today. And so you needed like in order to make everything work, this may not seem like a lot to them, but what's key is that here you are at 16 watching this work, the same things we're talking about. So you needed like $100 a month, but got no job, right? Okay, so tell what's happened in the last couple of months. Okay, so I had to come up with $100, and I had no idea how I was going to do it. The <laughs> only income I had was I would babysit every week, and it wasn't really a fixed. Sometimes it was like $8, sometimes it was 20 I had no idea, and it was once a week every month, and I need a hundred dollars every month, not just kind of whenever I felt <laughs> like it. So it was different, and I'm like, all right, I'm not gonna freak out. It's gonna be okay. I'm just gonna <laughs> relax. And so I prayed. I'm like, all right, God, you're, you obviously told them that it was okay to make me pay this, so it's up to you now. <laughs> you need to bring this through somehow. So I started tithing and giving my offer. I mean, I have been for a while. But I gave offerings in specific hopes that I would be able to get that money. And I started believing it, for it. And it came the end of the month, and I had received, like, nothing. And then he asked for um, to give some money to a couple. I'm not going to name any names. But, and God told me, give everything in my wallet. I'm like, it is the end of the month. <laughs> I've got to pay $100. I've got a solid, like, 60 Right now, I really need another 40. He's like, give it all. And I did. And it kind of stressed me out. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> but I gave it. I'm like, all right, you're telling me to do this? Then I'm expecting, you know, 100 bucks now, even more than before. And all of a sudden, my babysitting job fixed income for $20 every week, which was amazing. Yeah. And then it was still... But it still wasn't enough because I only had like one or two more weeks and I still needed a hundred dollars and it was like the very last day and someone literally just came up to me and handed me a hundred dollar bill I was like oh my goodness God. gracious <laughs> I was freaking out like I jumped I was so excited 
and I was able to pay that, and I had a little bit extra for my babysitting. And then it was a couple weeks later, I got another babysitting job. So this month, I ended up being able to pay, like, ahead of time my $75. I still had, like, $50 left, which does not sound like a lot. But to me, <laughs> that, I can eat Taco Bell for days, and I'm so excited. So Yeah, that's how yeah. I know when she's in abundance. Yeah. She's like, yeah, I went by Taco Bell today yeah. on the way home, you know. <laughs> so anyway, so question. What we're talking about and what we showed you to do, you saw it start working in the, a month. Yeah. 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 Is that right? Oh, yeah. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. Good job. <laughs> All right. Glory to God. So I wanted to give you a couple of testimonies. And, you know, we're not talking about, we're not talking about apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. We're just talking about regular believers in that way. We're not talking about people who have been doing business for 50 years. Right. You're talking about a 16-year-old right. who doesn't have a job. These things work. When you apply God's principles, they work. You see what I mean? We're, we're talking about, you know, we're not talking about, you know, Fortune 500 CEOs, right? And, you know, Nicole and I, I was just thinking about it this morning. Nicole and I had this uh, testimony. When the Lord, we started doing exactly what we're going to talk about today, uh, somewhere around 12, 13 years ago. And we took, literally, this is what we started with as far as our giving goes. Now there's some, we're going to be talking about not only the spiritual side, but the logical side, because they go together, and we're going to, we're going to go over that. But Nicole and I took what we were paying for our Netflix account, and we started sewing it. We started taking care of the spiritual side of things. And when we took care of the spiritual side of things, that Netflix account that we were given, now we're giving uh, over, over, all right? We're giving, let's see, oh man, over 50 times that per month now. Over 50 times what we were able to give, like, and we were almost leaving, living month to month. Now, I'm not talking about our tithes. That's not including our tithes. I'm talking about offering over and above our tithes. I'm also not talking about what we give when we have special speakers. That's special stuff. I'm talking about strictly what goes out of our checkbook at the, at the first of every month from that Netflix account that we started with. It's now over 50 times that every single month, right? And so what I'm telling you is something that we've lived, something that we're still living right now and believing God for for more and more, and he just continues to increase, and he's not a respecter of persons. If you apply the principles that we're talking about, God will, God will do the same for you. Why? He, look, I might not be trustworthy, you might not be trustworthy, but God is trustworthy. And so what we're tapping into is things that he's shown us to do in his word, all right? And so, one of the things I wanted to go, let's turn to, let's turn to uh, Exodus and chapter 17. And I want to read you this story. It's one of my favorite stories, Exodus 17, 8. So the very first verse that I showed you, the very first verse that I showed you was, uh, 2 Corinthians 9, 8, which shows you that God wants to bring you an abundance for every good work, always, all the time, and he does it by pouring out his grace on you, right? He's able to make grace, all of it, abound in your life. The question is, are we able to receive that grace? Now, we receive that grace based off of the things that we do. Our actions will determine an increase or a decrease in our harvest. Now, why are we at a financial workshop and I'm preaching? Uh, all right, so hold your place there, but you may want to write this scripture down. Is 1 Corinthians 1.21. Why am I going to preach to you a little bit? Here's why. 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 21, such an important verse. It says this, For the wisdom of God, for since in the wisdom of God... The world through its wisdom did not come to know God. So in other words, the world's way of doing things, it didn't help them. Yeah. But then it says this, but for since the wisdom of God, God is, was well pleased through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. 
So here's what happens. See, a lot of the world sees preaching as complete foolishness. But right here, God tells us this, that in the foolishness, what the world would call foolish, right, God actually has your salvation inside of it. And so what that means is one word can change everything. You will remember a couple years ago, right as, actually we did this class last time at the end of this year, but we start, the Lord started putting some words on my heart. I started confessing about increase and all of a sudden uh, I, we preached on increase, the foolishness of preaching. Remember there was a series called Bye Bye Debt, Hello Abundance. And what happened was people got it in their heart that God wants them to increase. Remember in Luke 2.52, uh, Jesus, we're supposed to take after him and follow him. And it says he continued or he kept increasing in wisdom and stature and favor with God and man. And it showed that Christ nature was to increase and to keep increasing right well then we should take that if we're going to follow Christ we should increase and we increase in wisdom and stature means maturity right and then favor are you increasing every day in favor with God are you increasing every day at your work with favor with men right we can believe God for that what what is a promotion at work but a, a really an increase in favor at your work and so when we start to believe on these things that year we started preaching and one of them we were talking about debt and how it was a bondage bye bye debt hello abundance right that was the name of the series and we did several we, another one I think that year was on increase we started talking about that it got into the hearts of people it got into the hearts that debt is not my friend debt is a bondage it's captivity and we need to see it gone and I'm telling you more now than ever you need to be out of debt right and so in this moment in this year we went and we had I would say probably that year uh, we probably had to begin that year 40 adults in the Sunday service so we're not talking about a lot of people and now we have partners literally all over the world but you know not not a ton of them we don't have like a thousand partners we got a handful of partners that believe in our ministry and stuff like that that year that's where it was at in one year period of time we saw over nine hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of debt be erased we saw over a hundred and fifty three thousand dollars in salary increase in 12 months time in that group of people simply because the foolishness of preaching awakened our faith to believe God and just like with Abigail just like Will and Natalie the supernatural started to go to work see you have to understand that your finances are not just a product of logic your finances are a product also of the supernatural and God wants you to operate in that increase in abundance matter of fact we just finished a service one month ago kickstart many of you were here almost every night and you remember during that one word the foolishness of preaching the foolishness of preaching brings salvation if it brings that spiritual salvation it brings salvation in every area that God has salvation for us that includes provision so one word can all of a sudden pop something in your spirit and you start having faith on a different level. Specifically today, we're talking about in our finances. One word was given uh, to Corey sitting here and Ted said to Corey, violent increase. That was a violent increase in your finances. And then the Lord spoke to me. He said, that word's not just for Corey. That word's also for John. John came up. The word was violent increase. The very next morning, he got a contract for $27,000 in his business, right? Increase. twenty. The next morning, one word, the foolishness of preaching. By the end of the week, like two or three days later, the contract went up to $35,000. So it was already $35,000. We had somebody else whose finances, uh, their salary went from where it was. They, weren't they were supposed to get like a 15th increase in about three to six months. And they, their salary went up one and a half times two weeks after that, after that meeting, right? Increase. And we said during that meeting, there's something supernatural on this meeting for finances. 
We have to understand that our finances are the same. Now, since that meeting, I've already heard the testimonies, including all of that. We've already seen over $100,000 in increase a month ago, right? It's not just logical, although some people are really missing it in logical. Some people are really missing it in supernatural. Some people are missing it in both, right? And uh, don't raise hands, anybody. But, you know, we've been there. We were missing it in both. And we got a hold of these things, and things started to turn around. Amen? So this is why we're talking about. Let's look at this story. This is Exodus 17, 8. It says, And then Amalek came and fought against Israel at Rephidim. So Moses said to Joshua, Choose men for us to go out and fight against Amalek. Tomorrow... I will station myself on the top of a hill with the staff of God in my hand. Joshua did as Moses told him and fought against Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went to the top of the hill. So it came about when Moses held his hand up that Israel prevailed. But when he let his hand down, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy. And then they took a stone... And put it under him, and he sat on it. Really spiritual. Right? Really spiritual. No. Really physical. Logical. He took a stone, and he put it under it. He sat on it. And then Aaron and Hur supported his hands. One on one side, one on the other. Thus his hands were steady until the sun set. Joshua overwhelmed Amalek with his people by the edge of the sword. Right? And so what you see in this... Is this a supernatural victory? Something supernatural was going on that when he lifted the rod of God up, right, they were winning. But when he dropped it, they were losing. There was something supernatural and spiritual that was happening in this place, right? But notice in the middle of a supernatural victory, they took a very logical rock, right, and put it under his Bahonkis, right? They, they took this rock and put it there, and it seemed so unspiritual. But yet, that helped them to win the victory. In your finances, it's the exact same way. You may have the spiritual side down, but if you don't get the logical side down, see, everything we do in God is a partnership between God and us. If you don't get the logical side of actually how do I handle these finances, then, you, then you're going to miss the bigger victory. Or you may have the logic down, like you may be very good in the world's finances, but you don't have the spiritual, and you're missing the abundance. You're missing the supernatural increase. We're teaching you how to have both, and it works. Amen? Amen. All right, so as we're going forward, I want you to see this. And uh, you, you have a sheet. One of these, if you haven't filled it out already, is a sheet for you to fill out and uh, it's blank for you to take with you. One of the things that you're going to see, you can go to this. If they'll put it up, it's bclife.org. They'll put it up on the screen. bclife.org slash budget. Now, when you go there, you're going to find the tools that you need. All of these things that we're talking about, they're going to be on there. It's already existing, and even a video from the last class, this, one, this video today will replace that video. But you'll see, and you'll find there the steps, all of these sheets uh, that you have, the tools, an Excel spreadsheet that you can plug in your own numbers. You'll find the things that you need there. A matter of fact, these are the same tools that uh, Jade has used at her work uh, in the finance industry. And uh, so this is, a, and it's a good thing. They can go and watch that video, and your friends can then actually, anybody that you think that needs it, they can go and watch and get a hold of this same teaching so that they can change these things. Now, one thing I want you to see is on this one sheet, it's printed on the front and the back. This is an example. We're going to refer to this uh, multiple times here. This is an example sheet. If you're looking at the bclife.org slash budget, the web page, you'll see that it says an example sheet. And then on the back of this is steps to financial freedom. And these are the steps that we're going to focus on today. These are the logical steps. It's kind of a mixture of the logical and the supernatural at one. So when we look at this, one of the things uh, that we want to make sure uh, that we pay attention to is, all right, Lord, what's our next step? 
What do we do next? What's, what's the progression that we need to take in our finances to see this? Well, the first thing is uh, steps to financial freedom. Know your income. You know, it's amazing to me. Uh, one of the things that I found out is what this sheet and this spreadsheet that we work on, it really gives you a snapshot as to what your finances really look like. Because a lot of people don't know. And I've found that even though I kind of know what our finances are all the time in, in my head, I, I, I like working with numbers. It works for me, right? I, I understand numbers. I, that's just me. But I've found that even though I know numbers and I know our budget for the most part, every time I revisit this spreadsheet for myself, we move more towards increase and away from debt right because I need to look at this on a regular basis and keep my focus on getting out of debt keep our focus on not spending too much that month keep our focus on setting our budget putting some money back and saving in that way right a lot of people think that they are doing well a lot of people think that they are doing well by making a lot of money but here's the question that I have for you let's say uh, that Johnny here uh, makes $30,000 a year, right? And let's say that Natalie makes $300,000 a year. Which one's doing better financially? Completely depends. Because Johnny may be saving $5,000 a year and Natalie may be spending it all or going into debt. And at the end of the year, she may have a few more to toys, but Johnny's in better shape, you see? And that, now that's worldly logic. Now let me give you a step further. Uh, Johnny may be, a lot of times in the world, we determine who's saving the most. But then the next step in worldly logic is not who's saving the most, but who's investing the most. Right, And so we see these steps. The first person thinks a very immature look at finances says, how much am I making? That's how successful I am. The second one says, how much am I, am I saving? The third one says, the third step of maturity in their finances says, how much am I investing? Right, But when we start to understand the word, we start to say, understand this, that the best shape of my finances is, how much am I investing in the eternal? in the kingdom of God. Because when we get to the place where we're investing in the internal, uh, Jesus gives us a promise in Mark chapter 10 that when you give for my name's sake or the gospel's sake, he says, I will give back to you a hundredfold return now in this time and in the time to come. So when we invest in the things of Christ, we start to see a return supernaturally now and in eternity. Now think about this, the worldly uh, person in their finances, let's say that they're investing uh, all of their, and they're making good money and investing well. But you know what? As soon as they pass from this earth, no value to them whatsoever. But in God, he gives us the ability to make investments in him, have a return here better than we can ever see in the stock market, and in eternity. He gives us that ability to do that. God is the best investment that you can ever make. And when you start to believe that and walk in that, you'll start to see the fruit of that. And we are a testament of that ourselves. We're starting to see. Even things where, uh, you know, there are certain financial things I didn't have figured out. And the Lord, just a few years ago, all of a sudden, I turned a corner and God showed me something. And, and he had had it figured out the whole time, which is what he told me 10 years ago. 10 years ago, I said, Lord, what do I want? What, what about this in our finances? He said, you just be obedient to what I told you and don't worry about that. I go 10 years down the road and all of a sudden I find out he's been taking care of it the whole time. Right? And he's got a plan better than I could even had planned, talking about investments and things like that. He had a plan that I didn't even know about, and it was already set up for me. I just had to be obedient in today. Right? God is a great investment in what we do. So, but one of the things that I've found is when I look at this sheet and I fill it out for us, which I do this on a regular basis, I generally look at this for ourselves two, three, four, five times a year, and it helps me to know what am I paying off next, how am I budgeting, where's my money going, right? It helps me to understand where is that money going. All right, so one of the first things that you, is good to do is know your income. Know what's actually coming in. Step number one, 
know your income. So many people do not know actually how much they make. Or they may know the gross amount or the large amount before taxes, but they don't know what they are taking home. And then all of a sudden they find themselves, man, we're going backwards. I don't know why or whatever. You know, a lot of people know how much is coming in. Know how much you have each month. Now, I will say this, that sometimes uh, you have a situation. We were in this situation. This caused us a lot of heartache when we didn't know what to do with it. We owned a company, and who knows what the customers, when the customers were going to pay. Like some days they would pay on time, and that was not the normal day. <laughs> it was, and some days they'd pay whenever they felt like it. That was the normal, right? So what we needed to do was really figure out kind of an average. You know, so let's say that as a business, we had, because, you know, if you had $10,000 a month coming in in a business, that's not that much for a business. Uh, it seems like it's a lot in our personal finances, but you've got a lot of overhead a lot of times in a business. So let's say that our income was $10,000 a month coming in, uh, approximately. But, you know, some months we'd have 5000 come in. Some months we'd have 15000 come in. So what you really need to do is kind of set an average and understand cash flow. All right, the average is 10000 a month. In order for me to budget properly, right, if you are like in sales or something like that, in order to budget properly, it would be good for you to look at the last year or two and figure out what your average monthly income is and then probably multiply that by 70 or 80% and function off of that budget. So let's say that your budget, uh, what you received for the year was, a, we'll use bit, easy numbers to divide. Let's say that your budget for the year was a hundred thousand dollar income. Then if you're, but it comes in in spurts, then you need to multiply that by about three quarters of that. So like 75%, 70 to 80%. And then you can say, all right, how much is that? That's about 75,000. Now divide it by 12 months. That'll give me what my budget should be each month. And then guess what? If you have a bigger year, you're in good shape but that'll help you to stay within the cash flow restrictions that you have. Anything you have today that you have questions on, feel free to ask those questions at the end. We can talk about those things. Um, write down your questions, because you may have a question that's very important. At the end, I may answer those questions for the group, or I may come to you individually if it's a longer question or more drawn out. So if you have any questions, just write those down. All right, so the first thing is steps to financial freedom. Know your income. If you don't know what's coming in, how are you going to know how to handle it, right? You've got to know what's there. Number two, and the, these are key. First thing is know your income. Here's the number two step is tithe. How do you know we're supposed to tithe on 10% of our increase? How do you know what you're supposed to tithe if you don't know what your increase is, right? If what your income is. So God tells us this in Malachi. He says this, Malachi 3.10, and this is the verse most of you have heard before, but I think it's important to look at it from this uh, perspective. And he says this, a lot of people preach on this and basically to raise the giving at their church, but in verse 9 it says, Malachi 3.9, it says uh, that they, um, basically you are cursed with a curse, right? He says, or let me start in verse 8. Will a man rob God? Will a man rob God, yet you are robbing me? But you say, how have we robbed you? Now I want you to see this. You've robbed me, God says, in tithes and offerings. So tithes are not the only place you can rob God. It's also in offerings, right? In other words, he told you to give something extra, and you were like, oh, but I needed, like Abigail. Would Abigail have had supply if God would have, uh, told her to give that offering and she didn't give it would she have had it probably not probably not see that that's the thing a lot of times people are not having the increase that they need because when God tells them something they're robbing from the Lord in that way and then he says this you're cursed with a curse for you are robbing me the whole nation of you in other words you're keeping back something that God's asked for or is asking for all right the tides are like that the tithes, you have to understand, he says this, uh, he says the tithe is mine and it's holy. So whatever our increase is, 
Whatever our increase is, God says 10% of your increase, it's not yours, it's mine. So one of the things that you should start to understand is if I have increase, I don't have 100% of that, I have 90% of that. The first 10% of that increase, it's God, and God has spoken in here very clearly, it's mine, and your only choice over that 10%, over that tithe, the only choice you have is either to rob God and keep it or give it back to God. It's not something where you get to choose. And where does it go to? He says, bring it into the storehouse. In verse 10 it says this, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. The storehouse is a place that's designed uh, to help disperse God's word, his gospel, his goodness, and resources to the people. We, a church, is a storehouse. In other words, let's say that I'm uh, tied in with a ministry uh, up in New York. Let's say that I was. And I'm, well, here's the thing. When I need help with my bill or I need prayer, is that ministry in New York going to send somebody personally into my life, know all about me and help me in that place? No. That's what the local church is designed to do. That's the storehouse. Are they going to, you know, I've been giving to you for years. Are you going to give, uh, are they going to come and help me that month when I need to pay my bill? No. No. Why? Because that's not what they're set up to do. They're a ministry. They're designed to receive those offerings, but not necessarily the tithe. You have to, you have, to have that at the local storehouse. It's pretty clear in there. So your local church is the place for your tithe to go. But God basically says this, that tithe is holy. So what happens when men do funny things with the tithe or with things that are holy? When, when men start to mess with holy things, that's when they mess up. Because you think about it, holiness, our God is a consuming fire. So if this table is God, if this is holiness, and I bring sin into the presence of holiness, that sin burns up. So when I start messing with something holy, I'm stepping on dangerous ground because I'm trying to bring unholiness into holiness and it cannot stay. So he says the tithe is holy. And this is why a lot of people, this is why he says you're cursed with a curse. In other words, God's not, not necessarily cursed you. What you've done is you've stepped out of the presence of God and you're trying to operate outside of him. You're putting yourself under a curse if you're withholding that tithe. And, and here's the only choice. Again, you either keep the tithe for yourself and rob God because it's his or you give it back to him and watch what he says. He says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house. And test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you a blessing until it overflows. Then I will rebuke the devourer for you so that it will not destroy the fruits of the ground. Or in other words, what you put your hand to will work now and your stuff will last longer, all that. And he says, nor will your vine in the field uh, cast its grapes, says the Lord. In other words, the, the vine will not shed the fruit that should be coming into your harvest. God says these things, I'll give you protection and opportunity and I'll overflow it in your life. When you tithe, I will give you protection from the enemy and opportunity. And that's exactly what y'all just said. You said, you know, we started tithing and giving those offerings. All of a sudden you saw that increase. You saw where the devourer had been in your finances. Now all of a sudden it got flipped. And now you are actually able to give. You're walking in a better financial place. That's exactly what happens when we start to tithe. Right now, so the first thing is tithe 10% of your increase. You are not going to move to abundance if you're keeping back the tithe. You're not going to move into offerings until you tithe. In other words, offerings, many people think, well, I gave an offering when uh, Ted came or when I had a special speaker, something like that. No, offerings are actually over and above the tithe. If you didn't tithe first, you're not into offerings. And here's the key. Remember the verse that we just read? Let's go back to it now. First, or excuse me, 2 Corinthians... Chapter 
2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8, it says this, And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that always having all sufficiency in everything, you may have an abundance for every good deed, for every good work. Now, we already covered this. Does God want an abundance for every good work? Absolutely. He wants an abundance in your life. But then how does that abundance get there? How do we get to verse 8? Well, in order to get to verse 8, let's read verse 6 and 7. Now this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must do just as he purposed in his heart. Now right there is the key. Just as he purposed in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. God loves a cheerful giver, right? In other words, one of the things then we get into verse 8 that says, and God is able to make all grace abound. Now look at verse 10 too. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. This is, he brings increase. He increased the harvest of your righteousness. Now, here's the, remember I said the key was as they purposed in their heart, right? Now, we either return the tithe to God or not, but do we choose what, what to give, how much, and where to go? No. In the tithe, it goes to the church and it's a set amount. And our job is simply to give it back to God. It's not our choice. But when we get into the offering, it becomes our choice as we purpose in our heart. So this scripture right here is not talking about the tithe. It's talking about offering. And we start to see this is where my will comes into play. And I can have more or less based off of what I choose. Another key in, uh, ingredient in here is verse 10 where it says this, that God will give seed to the sower. So see, a lot of people are sitting there like, I just don't have extra seed to sow. I would sow if I had it. Well, here's the thing. What's happened is in your heart you haven't chosen to be a sower yet. You haven't chosen because as soon as you choose and in your heart you become that sower, God will start putting seed in your hand because his word is true. As soon as you choose that, he will put seed in your hand. And what it looked like for Nicole and I when we were starting out, I mean, we were living week to week, paycheck to paycheck. I mean, we were, we were believing checks wouldn't cash at the bank. I mean, we were in just trouble, you know, and financially. And it had been like that for years. Our nose barely above water, and that was only on every other wave. Most of the time we were under, and every other wave we'd get our nose up a nostril and breathe in our finances, right? And, and here's what happened. And we had started tithing, but we weren't in the overflow yet. And we said, Lord, we need something. I, and I just, I had it on my heart. And one day I was driving down the road, and I said, Lord, I just want to give you something that means something to me. I want to give you something. What am I doing? I'm purposing in my heart to be a sower. I'm purposing in my heart to be a sower. I said, what, what do I have that I could give you on a regular basis? I want to give you something that means something to me. I want to, I want to sow into you something that's, that's heartfelt and personal. And guess what God said? Cancel your Netflix account. I was like, not that, Lord. <laughs> not that. I like that Netflix account. That's when we have downtime, that's what we do. I like that Netflix account. It was like $20 a month, right? But I knew that's exactly what I was asking for. I said, okay. I immediately, I called, I canceled it. However, I canceled it at that time. I took that $20 and we started that month. I set it up in the bank account. The new bill pay had come out. $20 going into the kingdom of God every single month. Every single month, right? And that started that $20. That's why I was telling you earlier, it's over 50 times. It's over that. It, it, every single month that's going out, every single month offerings. That's over and above the tithe, yep. right? 
Why would we do that? Because the sower, the key word there is sower. When you start to sow, you're planting seed. And when you plant seed, it will come up. We are receiving now the fruits of stuff we've planted in the past. And what's happened is that abundance has started all grace abounding. It has started to overflow and abound. And all it is is just a process of, Lord, in my heart I start to decide to be a sower. And when you start to be a sower, you'll start to see what you're doing is you are engaging the supernatural. When you engage the supernatural. So the first thing we need to do in our finances is we need to deal with our heart. Where is our heart on these issues? What do we need to do? Where's our heart at? We need to make sure, are we, are we ready for God to increase us financially? Are we ready for Him to increase us supernaturally? If we're not a tither and a sower, we're not ready for that increase. And will we see it? No. And if we had it, would we do right with it? No. God wants to supernaturally increase you, but you don't get into God's supernatural increase by sitting and doing things naturally. You've got to be in God's ways to have His supernatural increase. And let me tell you something. I can, I can increase you some, but I can't increase you any time like God can. When God increases you, you're, it's like overwhelming. I mean, God will just start to pour out on you. And you just say, Lord, I trust you. I have faith in you. I see your promises. I see some of your ways, and I'm going to do that. So the first thing is steps to getting out of debt, steps to moving towards abundance and financial freedom is know your income, be a tither, and have a heart that's purposed to be a giver and a sower. Right Now, I will say this. When you're sowing and you're tithing, listen, you, when you sow into an organization that is not advancing the good news, advancing the gospel, that's not tithing and sowing. That's just you giving, right? That's just you giving. Uh, that, that's all it is. It's just you giving. One time I had somebody and they were like, well, I'm giving my tithes. Uh, you know, over here to this, uh, um, what's the word, nonprofit organization. They're doing a lot of good for people. I was like, that's not a tithe. Right. That's not a tithe. And that's not seed. It, God doesn't make the promise when you sow into good, good organizations. He makes the promise when you sow into Him. Seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. Your tithes should be at your local church where God has planted you. And your offering should not only be there, but it can also be at other places as well. But it should also, you got to think about the tithe belongs to God. But if I'm not willing to actually sow into the place where God has planted me to, you know, is my heart actually planted there? Do I believe in the vision and things like that as well? But it's not just for here. It can be when there's a special speaker. But you want somebody who's winning souls... And and seeing fruit. If you watch the Facebook Live I did the other day, we are we missing the point was the name of it. It's talking about having the manifestation of fruit. In other words, we should see uh, the Holy Ghost. We should see people healed and delivered and the power of God and souls saved. That's what you're looking for. Think about this. Is there soil that you can plant seed in that does better than other soil? Yes, so you're looking for places that, that have a big manifestation of the power and the love of God. That means they're winning souls, making disciples, they're bringing about healing and deliverance in every area. They're seeing the power of God. That means, here's what that means. When you see the love of God and the power of God manifested in a ministry, it means that that ministry is connected to the head. Right? They're connected to Christ. They're connected to the head of that. And that soil is going to give you the greatest harvest and return. Right. So it's important where you sow as well. Yet you want to be sowing into good soil and you want to be sowing into good spiritual ground. All right. So now when we uh, move on down the sheet, you'll see this. All right. Know your income, tithe, 10% of your increase. And give slash sow for abundance. Understand that when you give, I'm not just giving. So if I just, if I just give something, like if I just give something to Johnny like that, well, if I'm giving it to him, now I no longer have it. But if I sow something, 
then I'm expecting a return. We should expect a return. The Word shows us that we should expect a return. In other words, if I give something, I, I believe that once I plant something, I now have a return. Because if I don't believe for that, then what's going to happen is I'm sowing, but I'm without faith. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. He's told me that as long as the earth remains, seed, time, and harvest will remain. So if I just give but don't expect the harvest back, I'm not putting faith on his word. You see what I'm saying? In other words, I shouldn't just give, I should sow. And there's a difference. Those two words do not mean the same, although they can be used in the same. You, know, you, might, you might be given but not sowing, right? You might be given but not sowing and expecting a return. And this is important about our heart when we give. Or you might be, you can actually give thinking you're sowing, but your heart's not right in it. You know, you're, you're not actually seeking the Lord on it. You're just got your worldly thinking and the love of money and the, the seed of riches operating, and you won't have the same kind of return. Uh, key to giving and sowing is working on your heart. Why am I doing this? Am I doing this because here's the reason why you won't. I love God. I love God. When you love God, this is really part of what it talks about in the bountifulness. It talks about sending a blessing and being bountiful in my heart when I sow. In other words, when I sow, I want to make sure that I'm sending the gospel and I want to make sure that I'm, I'm giving it in such a way that my heart is happy to do it. And it is uh, sending my sowing, my seed with a blessing. All right. These are little ingredients in there that can determine a bigger or a lesser harvest in your finances. All right, the next thing is to know your outflow. To know your outflow. So if you look at this, let's look at this uh, sheet. We'll look at the top of the first uh, graphic here. Your budgeting worksheet, and you'll see on the example side of it, on the back of the steps, uh, you'll see the budgeting worksheet. And you'll see this, this uh, what they got on the screen there. Over on the left side, you see that this is an example for John Doe. Let's go to the top of that. It says total monthly income after taxes. Now, this means, you know, all right, let's say that you made uh, $3,000. Uh, let's say that you made $3,600 a month at your job. Just throw in some numbers out there. Let's say that your taxes were $600, and now what you're looking at after taxes is $3,000. You'll see there that in this sheet now, we know what our income is. The very first column there. Uh, see, why do we tithe first? Because the Lord says, let it be the first fruits of your income. In other words, he teaches us this principle that the first thing I ought to do in everything that I do is honor God. Right, so we're gonna. That's why we talked about tithing and sowing first, because the very first thing we want to do is pay attention. Lord, I'm remember seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things. It's talking about physical things will be added to you. I'm not going and and giving God what's left over. I'm seeking Him first, and I have a promise from the Creator of the universe. He'll add to me. So we do this first at the tithe. We say, okay, the tithe. Uh, was $360. Now you see there on the left, it says 12%. What we did, what I'm talking about is tithing on the gross. That's what Nicole and I do. Different people have different viewpoints. There's not one scripture that says tithe on the gross or tithe on the net. There's not one in there that says it. But I believe that there are some scriptural principles that you want to look at. And that is one of the things that we see is that Look, God really cares about how we give. Do we really want to give or are we giving out of obligation? You know, are we giving out of, well, if I don't do this, I'll be cursed with a curse, so I got to. You know, if we do that, then is our heart really right, right? So we want to give. You know, if it's a if it's a choice for us, we'd rather give the bigger amount. You know, if we ever asking, well, what should we give? Should we give, you know, a uh, hundred dollars or hundred and fifty dollars? Well, we're going with the bigger amount. You know, why? Because we want to be a cheerful giver. These are keys that have opened up abundance in our life. And uh, here here's the thing that we got to make sure is that our heart is right in our giving. 
So years ago, we weren't tithing at one point, and then we figured out that was wrong. And then we, uh, and then we were tithing on the net, but then we also understood this. See, uh, what do your taxes go towards? Now, I'm not getting political here, uh, because some people are like, who knows, you know, not what I want, you know, any, some people would say that, but what do your taxes go to? Ultimately, <laughs> the teacher says, they go to me, amen, and uh, ultimately, your taxes, think about it this way, is almost like paying for a benefit to live in this country. Is that part of your increase, living in this country? Yeah. Are you blessed to be here? I can tell you by going to other countries, we are blessed to be in this country. And if that's what it costs me, cost me to walk in that blessing, that is an increase in my life. And so that's how we looked at it. If you have any questions, we can talk about that. But basically in this example, you see the tithing on the full check before the taxes are taken out. And that's why the 360 is there. Now the 12% not being 10% is, this is going to be 12% by tithing on the full amount. It's 12% of our take home pay. And that's why it says that. So just so you understand these numbers. All right, and then uh, a good thing that we thought is a really good number to start with is if I'm given 10%, 10% uh, of our income is God's, in the overflow, in the sowing and the increase, I think it's good to try and believe God for 5% over that. So if you look at that, in this example, we gave uh, like to our, our church, there's $125, that's 4.2% of our take-home pay. And then $25 to another ministry, that's a 0.8%. So that equals about 5%. So there you see God in the tithe protecting and opening doors of opportunity. And in the offering, he's, and listen, what are the opportunities that he will give you in the tithe? A lot of people think, well, if once I tithe, God's just going to pour it out from heaven on my head and it'll overflow and it'll all... Think about it like this. Didn't he say that I'll open the doors and some translations say the windows? Well, what are doors and windows made for? Doors and windows. Windows are made to look out of and get vision, yep. right? And doors are made to step through. In other words, and we know from the word that we, what we can see, we can have. Right. But we've got to walk through it. It's doors of opportunity and windows of vision that's opened up for our tithe. In other words, when we tithe, there's opportunities that you'll start to see that you couldn't see otherwise. Many people are missing the actual worldly investments that God would have them because they're not tithers. They'll miss the opportunities. And you know, their friend sitting next to them that's a tithe will be like, oh yeah, I uh, heard about this one thing to go and invest in. You know, it was this little fruit company, you know, like Forrest Gump. And it was like, you know, uh, a few dollars a share. And now it turns out to be Apple Computer and it's worth, you know, they're millionaires now because... God opened up an opportunity and showed them a place where to put their money early on. You see what I'm saying? This is what the tithe does, and it's important for us to see that. All right, so then it opens up opportunities. Some of those opportunities can be like with Abigail's story a while ago. As a tither, she has a right to see an opportunity, and she's been given the seed that she needs to step through the door. The opportunity that she had was to sow into something that God was doing, and by that sowing, she then reaped an abundant harvest from that opportunity. So tithing opened up the opportunity and it helped her to have the seed, and then when she step through the door, now she had all of grace abound. Okay, So this is how that works. Now look at this. So then you'll have their savings. It's important for us to be putting back money. Now before you know where your finances are, uh, don't fill in this blank yet until you know what you actually have going on. Because you might want to put back $500 extra a month, but if you're going backwards in your budget each month, you can't do that yet. You know, so wait to fill this out, but here's just an example. Notice you'll see in the steps, it says, know your income, tithe, and sow, but then know your outflow. Continuing on in the left column, you'll see that your rent, the groceries, 
the vehicle fuel. You figure up, you gotta know what's going out the door. Restaurants, electricity, water. These are things that's not necessarily uh, credit that you have or debts that you have. It's monthly expenditures that are there and we've given you an example of all of these that you could have so you can help fill, fill them in. And also in that spreadsheet when we put in the numbers it will give you a good idea of what percentage you're spending. So if you see one that's really high you'll say what is that doing so high this month? Uh, you go down and you'll see cable, internet, home phone, mobile phones, uh, all these. Now you'll notice that some of these are in red. The reason for that is these are highlighted places where people can find money to cut. In other words, they, these are good areas where they can uh, stop spending money. Did you know, did you know that you do not have to have cable at your house? I mean, for real, you don't have to have it. You can live without cable. I know that's revelation to some people, but <laughs> did you know that you could, you know, we were paying, you know, like on one of the satellite providers, we were paying like $150 a month for that stupid thing. And uh, a few years back, I said, you know what? Let's up the internet uh, usage. You know, it was like go up to 50. Now, now we got like 200 down or something like that. But at this point, let's go up to that, buy an internet phone, right? Get a Roku box that'll have, have those uh, things on there. We were paying, we, we spent like $100 for the Roku box, $100 for the phone, maybe 150, uh, a, a voice over internet phone. It cost us then about $110 for internet, TV, and the phone, where it was costing us upwards of around $300 for all of that. We saved $200 a month just in doing that. So there's things that you can do, and this is something when we get to the end of this class and we enter these numbers for you, this is something where we can, if you've got questions, hey, do you know how to cut this? We may. There's things that you can do, and we can help you. So, all right, so any of these areas. Did you know that you do not have to go to a gym and have a membership to be in shape? It's this amazing thing. They just invented it last week called push-ups and planks. <laughs> It's the, most, it's the most amazing thing. People have been working out like this for centuries and not paying a gym membership. You don't have to have these things. And understanding this really helps. Did you know you don't have to? And this is, now we're getting down into the, really the responsibility that we need to be walking in. You know, think about this. Let me just throw this at you. When we did Boom Fest, because we know what we're doing, it cost us, we had over, over 1,200, uh, no, it was over 1,000 salvations that we were sure of, right? There was probably more. Over 1,000 in one day. It cost us less than $7 per salvation yep. because we know what we're doing. Less than $7 per soul that committed to Christ. So now, when I've got an extra, well, I'm just going to go buy, you know, I'm going to pay that extra $100 for the gym membership each month. Well, okay, you can pay that or you can do some planks and you can do some pull-ups with a little pull-up bar at your home and do some, do some push-ups and that $100 can now be with, in the hands of people that know what they're doing, over 10 souls in the kingdom. You see what I'm saying? Well, you mean for an eternity now, somebody can be with God because a ministry knows, and I've decided to be smart with my money and give to a ministry that knows what they're doing. Versus, and I can still be in shape. I can go for a run. I can do some planks. I don't have to have that membership. Now, God could tell you, go have the membership. At one point, he told me, told us to go get the membership, right? And we did. And that, you know, matter of fact, um, just yesterday, uh, benefits of what, when he told us to have that membership at the Y, came through for the church. He knew what he was doing, yeah. right? He knew what he was doing in that way. So you got to listen and be obedient. But the question is, are we willing to even put our stuff that we really like on the table? You know, are we willing to do that? You know, sometimes, you know, what's the difference between 
you know, driving, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't have good cars. God wants to bless you with abundance. But if you are barely, in your finances, you're barely above water in your finances, and you're driving, you know, an $800 a month Mercedes versus paying, you know, for a car, I mean, four months of that's $3,200. I can lead you to a whole bunch of cars that will drive for a long time for $3,200. But because you want the status symbol or you want, you want to have it and you're spending $800 for six years per month, right? That's a lot of money. You've got to recognize what's the difference here and what's really of value. And it's time for us to get out of debt. What could you have if you were completely out of debt and every single month you weren't paying that interest to that place? But you were out of debt now. What could you give into the kingdom? you got to remember, this, is, this period of time, this 120 years, it's just a vapor. There's a whole eternity after that. And you're going to want to have done things in this 120 years you're here on the earth so that in the eternity you'll be living in the uh, rewards that God has for you too. Which is more valuable, having that here or having a reward from God for eternity? It's a big difference and, and it's time for especially the church to get really grounded in some, you know, logic, you know. Uh, well, you may be in a house that, you know, you're paying $3,000 a month for, but you really only live in two rooms of it. It's not a, it's time, it's a good time to take and make some decisions like that and make sure that you know, you know, what are you doing? It's a great time to review those things. And I'm not telling you to go tomorrow and sell that stuff. You, before you make big decisions like that, it's good to get spiritual uh, advice on that and see, did I hear from the Lord right on this? And get some confirmation. But at the same time, be willing to put things on the altar of God. Lord, what would you have me to do? You know, for me, it was a small thing, the Netflix subscription, that I really didn't want to give over. But now you can see that years later, man, that thing is paid off. Glory to God. And, and now we have Netflix and it's no big deal at all. We've got that. In other words, he gave it back to us. But it, it was our heart at the beginning. It was our heart that opened it up. Am I willing to put it on the altar? And it's a good question. All right, so know your outflow. You'll also see, if you're looking at this uh, example sheet, uh, over in the top side, the red side, we'll look at that in the end, uh, on the right side in the red. But at the bottom you see debt being erased. Now here's where you can put in the different credit accounts that you have. Uh, your mortgage, a car loan, uh, credit cards or student loans, something like that. And we've got some examples there. So for example, the mortgage monthly payment is $1,000. Uh, the percent of my income is 33%. The balance is 88,000. The limit where I bought the debt was 99,000. Uh, the percentage of limit is 89%. You'll see that score is called the DALP score. Uh, and that is simply the balance divided by the monthly payment. Now, that's a very simple uh, math calculation, but it actually takes several things into account. And what is good to do is look at that DALP score. And uh, DALP is something that uh, you can see it on the front, uh, done on last payment. Uh, that came from David Bach. I heard him teaching on it some years ago. I did the math on it, figured out some things on it to kind of look at. It just gives you a good idea of what you should pay off next. It takes into consideration what the percentages are you're paying, what your monthly amount. It gives you a good idea of what should I pay off next. And it's basically your balance divided by the minimum monthly payment. You'll see uh, like on down there at Chase, your, your DALP score is 14. What that basically means is in approximately 14 payments, that thing will be paid off. And when that payment is paid off, you'll have 30 extra dollars a month, right? That 30 extra dollars a month could then go to getting out of debt every month. You're already paying your bills without that 30, so when you don't have to pay that 30, apply it to the next one. So you'll notice here in the, uh, the DALP score is 14 there so you would pay that you've got uh, the balance is four hundred and thirty dollars let's say you got your taxes back and they were five hundred dollars you could pay that thing off now you have thirty dollars every single month that can go to the next one well what's the next DALP score is the 26 that's the car loan in that you got 30 extra dollars there your monthly payment 
uh, is 230. Well, now you could give 260 per month to that each month. And what will happen is these things start to snowball. And before you know it, you're paying it off. What happens when you pay off uh, that uh, car loan? Now you've got $260 a month coming off of that debt and it starts to just snowball on you. So n next, the first thing is know uh, your income, tithe, so know your outflow and then get your budget in the positive. If it's not in the positive, make sure you take the steps to get it in the positive. Listen, you can't operate like our government, you right? who just spends whether they're, they're in the positive or not. Yeah, it's a funny thing. They, they say it's okay for them, but it's not okay for us. They throw us in jail for not doing that stuff. And you're going to go backwards in your debt, uh, debt constantly if you're not in the positive. Get your budget in the positive. Do what you've got to do. Eat some peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Get some cans of soup. You know, Raymond noodles. They might not be the best for you, but you can live off of them for a while. I mean, we've proven that, you know. Uh, do what you got to do. You do not have to go out to eat all the time. You don't have to. We're in a world that we want to keep up with the Joneses, and we're in a world that, that makes us think that you've got to do these things. No, you don't have to do these things. You don't. I can remember us staying skinny when we were young. You know why? Because we didn't have any snacks. You know why we didn't have any snacks? Because we didn't have any money for snacks, right? And so not only stay skinny, save money. Get out of debt. It's a great plan, you know? <laughs> Just go after it, you know? And uh, But now, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, let's buy some chips. And then what's happening at 11 o'clock at night? Where's the salsa, you know? And we're eating chips, right? It's Listen, you don't have to have that stuff. We don't have to have it now. Yeah, we don't have to have that stuff. You don't have to have it. Learn, hey, guess what this is? Fruit of the Spirit. Tell your flesh no. Tell your flesh no. No, you don't have to have it. No, Luke, you don't have to have a toy every time we go to Walmart. Sorry. Guess what? That no is good for him. It's good for him to recognize, no, you don't have to have it all the time. Why? He's learning as a child to develop his flesh, right? He's learning as a child. Didn't my flesh want the Netflix? Yeah. Didn't it pay off for me to hand it over and say no to my flesh? Oh, yeah. It pays to say yes to God and no to your flesh. So get your budget in the po positive. Now uh, listen, not only get it in the positive, but step six, cut your monthly budget as much as you can. Cut it. If you have debt, and even if you don't have debt, don't you know that us giving into the kingdom of God is the best thing that we can do? It absolutely is. So isn't somebody's eternal uh, position with God important and worth our time and effort and resources and money? Absolutely. That's what church is here for. Otherwise, we could just be uh, go up and be with God. But get, get out of debt. Get your budget in the positive. But cut your monthly budget as much as you can. In other words, just because you like to go. I remember we were talking about this last time. Johnny likes to cook. Man. Uh, they, yeah, he likes to cook. But I'm telling you, when they showed me their budget for groceries... For them and one child, my mouth about hit the floor. I'm like, good Lord, what are you spending money on? You know, y'all remember that? And uh, they, I said, well, you might want to consider maybe, just maybe, that taking that budget back a little bit and not doing that. And they did that, and their finances started going up. Listen, when you do things like that, it's not just the logical. God sees I'm willing to get in the right place where God wants me, and I'm going to bless them. Didn't y'all get blessed? Yes, amen. Y'all have a huge testimony from the time we did this last time. But listen, you can do things differently. Ask the Lord to show you how to do things differently. Cut that monthly budget as much as you can. I'm not saying knock out all of the fun stuff and all, listen, I, trust me. There's a moment where you need to take your wife, husband, and go buy the $100 steak. There's moments for that because if you don't, if you never think you're supposed to do that, you're living in a poverty mentality and you won't have faith for abundance. There's moments when you go spend the money, but then what you find is people fall into one or two ditches. 
either they'll never spend the money or they spend it too much, right? You've got to find that, and that's where the Holy Ghost comes in and helps you know where to do it. But on a regular basis, on a monthly basis, we've got, we need to cut off some of that extra in our spending and get it to the side so that we can get in the right position financially because God wants to take some people right now in this time and he wants to bless them and he wants to pour out, but he can't do it if they're not positioned right financially. All right. So get, cut your monthly budget as much as you can. Seven, budget monthly debt payoff money. Budget monthly payoff money. So if you look back at our example at the top of it in that red box, so you see here that we've calculated how much our average monthly bills are. We've calculated how much goes to credit companies. We've calculated our income and our tithing and our sowing and our savings. And if you look at that red box in the top right, you'll see total monthly income after taxes, 3000 Total monthly given, 510 This includes our tithe and our sowing. Okay, We do that first. We honor God first. Then we've calculated here that, hey, we are in the positive and we're going to set some savings. right? So in other words, we're saving some money up. Now... Here, we're going to give you some plan and strategy on how to save, what to save, and what to give it to. You'll see those in the next following steps. But the very first thing you want to do is you want to be able, uh, you want to, be able to put back $1,000 in that saving. But you can, we'll talk about that in a second. See this, that $150 is going every month to saving. Listen, do it like this. We set it up in our bank account. As soon as the, the check is put in, it automatically sends some to our savings account. It sends some to our giving account. It sends some uh, to this account. Automatically, it sends a check here to the church from ours. You know, it's constantly. We, as soon as her, like, she gets her monthly check, like, right around the first of the month. So, on, like, the second of the month, man, checks and transfers are flying. Right, Because we've got all this stuff figured out, lined out, and we get it in the places we want so that it's always already sitting there. We personally, because of this, we have our checking account that we pay bills out of. We have our uh, spending account that we just spend. This is extra money that we spend each month. We have a giving account. This is where we write offering checks out of, right? And we send it out. So we know what we can send. We what we can spend in each one of those. But we have several different accounts for different things. That's the way we've chosen to do it. It helps us to know what we have where, what we can spend, okay? But you'll notice here, cut your monthly budget as much as you can. Budget monthly debt payoff money. So when you look at your example, you'll see that it figures out your monthly savings, your bills, and your monthly debt. So the debt is your credit accounts. And then that will give you money left over. Okay, So now we have, in this case, we would have had $50 that was left over. So that $50 goes to erase that debt. Now in this particular example, what I would do is probably change some of the monthly savings and work on that. So now you realize that your, deb your debt accounts, the credit accounts, they're all being paid with your monthly amount, right? And one thing I will talk about credit is this. Don't just pay the minimum payment, right? Uh, pay at least a dollar more. We generally do about $5 more. That helps. It shows that you're not just getting by. It kind of shows them. It's one of the things that they have built in. And those things, those little uh, rules, they change as time goes. You, you may see different things. Jade actually has a link that she was telling me about beforehand where you can check your credit in all the different places for free, and it doesn't ding your credit. It doesn't put dents in your credit, right? Uh, which, praise God, that's an awesome thing. So if you'd like to get a hold of that, uh, you can talk to Jade in the hat. Amen. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, so uh, one of the things that you want to see is, look, I'm, my, my credit bills, they're being paid each month in my budget. But now I want to every month set aside that I'm not just paying off my bills, you know, the minimum payment that'll take me forever. I'm paying them off early. So I'm going to budget money in what I have over. I'm going to budget money to start paying off that debt early, right? 
And so then you also see in there uh, money to miscellaneous and money to play. As you get to the place where your income starts to rise over time, budget money that will be just extra. You know, just extra stuff where you can take the kids and go do something, but then live by that budget, right? Live by that budget. Uh, budget money just to play. You know, many times, you know, we have some that's like, oh, I really need this this month, and that comes out of our miscellaneous. Or, hey, we need to take the kids uh, and go play. We need to go do something uh, fun. You know, don't, don't do it every weekend. You don't have to go outside. Go outside, go walking in the woods, you know. You don't have to spend money on everything. It doesn't take money to have fun or to have joy or to have happiness. It doesn't take money uh, to do that all the time. So stop thinking that you've got to pay for everything. Ask the Lord to show you what it is that I need to do. How can we do this? We, we pray these prayers for years, right? All right, so if you go back to the steps... Cut your monthly budget as much as you can. Budget monthly debt payoff money. Then pay off the lowest debt first. So once you figure out your balance and you figure out your minimum monthly payment, it gives you that DALP score, figure out which one to pay off first and start working on that. So in this case, if, I, if this was our budget, I have $50 going to pay off monthly debt. What I would do is I would set up the minimum payment uh, for that payment plus about $5, and that'll help the credit score. But then I would take this $50 and I would send it in as soon as I get my check. I'm not leaving it to see if I got it left at the end of the month. I'm sending it in immediately, okay? The next thing that I'm going to do, as that gets paid off, then I just start working on the next one. Put back $1,000 cash as soon as possible. What is this for? This is so that if the brakes go out on the truck or something like that, because, hey, we're using them, stuff, and you don't go into debt for it. You don't have to go put it on that easy little plastic card. You've got the money in the bank to pay for it without adding to your debt. It's there. Uh, it's there if, hey, all of a sudden you need this. It's there, right? You know, the bigger family you have, the more issues like that that may come up because you just have more bodies, more things happening, right? You want to make sure that you are wise with your money. So put back $1,000 of cash as soon as possible. Budget monthly savings. So you want to budget, hey, I want to be saving this up. Now, if you're still in debt, this is what you do with your savings. You build up your savings, right? You build up your savings till it's at least $1,000. But anything over $1,000, like every time it gets to $1,500, take that extra $500 and pay off on that debt. So you're constantly putting money there to save. But let's say that you're saving now a pretty good chunk, everything. As soon as it gets over $1,000, take that extra and put it on that debt that you're working on paying off. That way you constantly have the $1,000 like a rainy day fund. You know, the brakes go bad or something like that. But you're constantly adding even more to paying off that debt. Okay? Uh, budget monthly savings. Save three to six months of income. Now, this may seem like a big, big deal, but I'm telling you, if you just start applying this, God will give you the increase. Remember, we're believing God for supernatural increase, and He'll give it. If you are giving and you are sowing, right? If you're giving the tithe and you're sowing, God's going to start blessing you. How many people, since we did this last time, started talking about increase? You've gotten big promotions at work and gotten bonuses and stuff like that. I know we have. You guys have. Look at this. Almost everybody that was here, right, they have gotten bonuses and promotions. You know, y'all's income changed huge, you know. 69% increase in your income. That's what I'm talking about. That comes from believing God for these things, all right? And then budget monthly spending money and budget monthly fun and play money. You do need to have fun. I heard one person one time talking about uh, talking about the fact that every time they pay off a credit card, they go do something fun or they buy something you know, a little bit bigger or whatever. They, they celebrate that. Make it fun to get out of debt. Now, don't pay off a $5,000 credit card and then go buy $5,000 worth of stuff, you know. And like, 
a nice dinner, okay? You know, have, make it fun. You know, use your head in these, in these items and uh, be wise about it and you'll see how the Lord will show you. Now, when we do this spreadsheet for yours and for your budget and we point to it and show it, you'll see that some, everybody's budget looks different. I mean, I've never seen any of them look really kind of the same. Everybody, and they have a little bit different strategy on that. And we'll give you, here, you don't have to do uh, what we say at all. It's completely up to you. But we'll give you some of that insight that we've seen in seeing people come free in that. Um, is there any questions that I have? I feel like I could probably talk for another two hours. These guys know that I can. And, uh, but is there any questions that you have so far on anything that we've talked about? Let's get a mic. You got it. Did it, everybody understand what we were saying with it and how to think through it? So ultimately, what we're doing is this. We're saying, Lord, we need your increase. We need your provision. And we're believing you for abundance, not just for ourselves, but for others as well, right? We're believing God for abundance for your kingdom. Listen, even people that don't know God have figured out that it can't be all about me. Even, even very wealthy people have figured out I need to be given. Now they'll give to some charity or some nonprofit. A lot of times it's not God, but it still works for them. It's on a limited basis, but it still works for them. They understand that if it's all about me, I'm going to be messed up and it's not going to work. But if I'll be a giver, what they're doing, they're just applying God's principles in finances. They're just, they're, they might not know it, but they're operating under kingdom of God laws, under his spiritual principles. So we're believing God for increase, not just for us, but for others around us as well, for the kingdom of God to be advanced. And as we line up with God's laws, he will start to bless our finances and draw us. But we're also not just using the spiritual side of it, we're pulling up the logical side of it to rest on as well. Let's make sure that we know what we have coming in, we know what we have going out, let's use our heads, ask God for spiritual wisdom, right? Ask him for wisdom and knowledge and understanding so that we can have supernatural insight into our finances so that we can be who God called us to be. Amen? Amen. So what we're going to do now, and anybody that may be watching this online later, uh, if, you want any, if you have any questions or you'd like any help with this, you're welcome to download the tools. They're there for your usage. Uh, you're welcome to fill those out, to give us a call, and, and we'll try to help any way that we can. We want to serve our community, and we want to see you out of debt and moving in God's abundance for your life as well. And, uh, you know, the Lord will show you those things, those opportunities to increase as well. Did you have a question? Okay, very good. So uh, we, we just invite you, you're welcome to call at any time, and uh, we can give you things that have worked for us as well. But what we're going to do now after this question is we're going to start uh, individually typing in what you figured out in your budget and so that we can take a look at it, you can see it for yourself, and then we can also uh, help you and give you some insight spiritual. Listen, this is very, very important as well. Many times, from a spiritual standpoint, many times, remember the foolishness of preaching, God will show us things to do that don't make sense to the world, but God knows what's coming up. Let me give you an example of that. This is why you don't want to just try to figure it out in your own, own head. You want to get spiritual insight. You want to get spiritual uh, help and words on things. So one time I have a minister that I know of, the Lord told him, uh, the Lord presented an opportunity, but he thought logically that it wasn't very good. He thought that it wasn't very good, and so he didn't do it. It would have cost him $1,000. He said, I had it in my pocket. He said, I could have bought the thing. It would have cost him $1,000. That $1,000, had he listened to the Lord, it would have made him a million. That's a pretty good investment. <laughs> That's why it's important to understand it's not just about logic, it's about listening to the Lord, right?
And the guy who presented him with the opportunity, he just did it all himself, cost him $3,000. He made $3 million off of it. And uh, so you want to hear from the Lord. In other words, don't just sit there at home and be your own little island. There, God's given you gifts in your life, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers that will help you to see things that you can't see, to know about things that you don't know about. There's times where the Lord's given us insight as to where the market's going, what it's going to do, stuff like that. But you can't know it unless you engage that gift. You've got to come and ask questions and open yourself up in that way. Otherwise, we'll just be quiet about it cause, unless the Lord tells us to say something. Is, and that's the way it operates. Jade, you had a question? Well, I was just going to say, with whenever, Hold it close. whenever um, <laughs> we did this class last year and the yeah. statement number 11, save three to six months of income, yes, kind of blew our minds. Yeah. <laughs> I was looking at that number, like, and how is that even going to work? Yeah. Um, but, and then doing this with clients at work, too, I found that, like, I know with our mortgage company and with our car payment company, yeah. you can actually pay your payments ahead. So yes. maybe not having it sitting right there in your savings where you can just But even it, already paid ahead. But having it paid ahead. So then every month you're just making a payment, but you're truly making your, like, third payment out, fourth payment out. That's so that awesome. that worked really great for us because it wasn't a temptation for it to be setting in savings and something happened. And then, oh, yeah, we've got this. Yes. So it, it worked better for us that way. That's so a terrific. A lot of companies do that. Yeah, that is terrific. I love that. And here's another little uh, fact that, so in other words, you just start believing God for these small increases. Uh, uh, well, you're believing for big increases, but they don't have to be big to turn into, I mean, they don't have to be uh, big to turn into big. They can start small, but you just be wise with it, and all of a sudden it turns very big. One thing that I know is when you get a mortgage, like if you got a 30-year mortgage, and if you pay one extra payment per year, with most people, the interest that they have, one extra payment. So let's say your mortgage payment is $1,000 a month. If you'll pay $1,000 a month plus one extra $1,000 every year, you knock out so much interest on there, all of a sudden you end up paying a 30-year mortgage around 17 years. That's a, and people don't know that. So all you've got to do is just, you know, that's, that's less than $100 extra a month to do that. And you knock off almost half of the interest that you would pay, if not more. I mean, it's a lot, right? So anyway, so there's little things that you can do. There's little things you can do with your credit. And you do want to have good credit in this society. But which is more important to having good credit or being obedient to the Lord? You want to you wanna go after him first, put him first, and he'll show you how to be wise. Was there another question, anybody? All right. Well, we thank you for being here. Father, I just ask right now that increase and anointing will come on people's finances and everything that they do. Lord, we just call debt a, what it is. We call it a bondage. In the name of Jesus, every bondage be broken off of your people. In Jesus' name, we thank you for it. We praise you for it. Lord, lead them to increase. Give them the wisdom. Give them the power. Open the doors and windows to see and have opportunity. And let them be strengthened with all might to walk through those doors. Lord, show them how to tithe, how to tithe with the right heart. Show them areas of how to sow into the kingdom. Lord, let every heart become a sower and let us all grow up into the fullness where your grace abounds always in every place so that we might have abundance for every good deed.